people analytics, workforce analytics, HR analytics, human capital analytics. Are these all the same thing? Are they different? What do we mean when we say them? They are all interrelated, which is why sometimes you see them used interchangeably. And it makes you wonder, do people mean something different when they say HR analytics or when they say people analytics? Or are they confused or am I confused? It could be any of those things. But really what is most likely happening is this whole field of study is still relatively new. Yes, we've been studying people at work for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, but as an area of study and as a profession, it's still relatively new. So many of the terms and terminology and definitions are still being crystallized. And that's really normal for any area of study, any area of work. So it makes sense that there's still a little bit of confusion that we're still working through some of the terms. That being said, I think that those who spend a lot of time thinking about these concepts do believe that they each convey a slightly different set of analytics approaches. And I wanna give you my view of how they overlap and where they differ. So of course, let's just throw in a Venn diagram. Why not? Best way to visualize what I'm thinking here. This is how I personally think about the difference between each of these areas of analytics. Now, people analytics is what I tend to talk about a lot, and I differentiate people analytics from some of the other areas because it encompasses understanding the whole person. So this means including other areas that are maybe outside of the work, uh, things like work-life balance, well-being, bias, fairness, so much about who we are as people. It is more than just understanding people at work. Workforce analytics is great because similar to people analytics, it looks at people at work, but it goes a step further on the side of understanding work and how work gets done. So workforce analytics can be really powerful because it includes things like understanding processes, optimization, and flows of work that have always been very important to understanding the ways that work gets done. And it'll also continue to be very powerful as we go through transformations like the inclusion of automation or robotic processing of work. And those are great examples of how you can do workforce analytics that may not necessarily involve the study of people. Now, HR analytics, some people could say is just any analytics conducted by an HR person. I would disagree with that and say that in my view, HR analytics is the study of HR related processes and techniques for the sake of improving or advancing HR practices. A great example would be something like recruiting analytics that helps to increase time to hire, time to fill. That area might overlap a little with workforce analytics, but you can see that it's around understanding the HR processes, improving them, and moving them along. And then finally, we have human capital analytics. This is its own niche area that really is getting into the concept that people have uh, value that they bring to the organization or to society through their work and understanding that value and analyzing it in terms of its contribution back. So again, might overlap with other areas. These are people, we're talking about work getting done, but you may not necessarily always see this as an HR analytics form. So there is nothing saying that when you're doing one type of project that it's definitely one or another of these categories. In fact, most projects are probably overlapping in two, three, maybe all four of these bubbles. And I think that's where the confusion comes in. People aren't sure what they're supposed to call something. And maybe it's okay that what you're doing is a more holistic approach. Uh, maybe we need to name that center point where it's bringing in all of these forms of analytics. But no matter how you look at it, it's going to come down to what's right for you, what's right to your organization, on where you should be focusing. I know when I was a practitioner working in multiple companies, I probably spent the majority of my time on workforce analytics and HR analytics. I was very concerned with things like workforce planning, uh, on being able to have very efficient talent management processes and implementations. And that was right for the roles that I was in at that time. 
I'll tell you now, I lean a little bit more towards people analytics and human capital analytics. And that's because on the human capital analytics side, I'm excited about all the new reporting standards and things about measuring the value that people bring to an organization. Uh, and then on the people analytics side, my background is in psychology. I am deeply interested in studying things like bias and fairness in the workplace. And people analytics tends to have a little bit more opportunities to play with research. Doesn't mean you can't do research on the other sides, but uh, I do like how difficult it can be to study people. And so I'm a little attracted towards people analytics at the moment. But I think they're all fantastic. There are great examples of when you might do one versus another. There is a lot of value. If I think about human capital analytics, this is where we have, you know, venture capital firms are really trying to understand the value of the people in an organization before they make an investment or a decision. When you think about workforce analytics, we can do amazing things through workforce planning and strategic approaches to transformations. There is opportunity galore when it comes to HR analytics and how we're able to free up time, energy, and be the best that we can be in the HR function by identifying opportunities with our data and bringing it forward. And then obviously people analytics, passion area of mine, there's so much potential there for what more we can understand and what we can apply for the world. So if you're trying to decide, you know, if your team, workforce analytics team, people analytics team, whatever, uh, they're all pretty fantastic. Uh, they all have wonderful applications and possibilities. And I don't think it's so bad if you end up, you know, using the terms interchangeably here and there to get your points across, because really they all have the same goal at the end of the day, which is to use analytics with positive, purposeful intentions around people and around the world of work. I hope you found this Venn diagram and descriptions helpful. If you have other types of analytics that you'd love to explain and differentiate, please add to the comments below. And if you want to check out more videos, I have them coming out monthly, so be sure to subscribe, and I hope to see you later.